on the Goodyear hotline now. CP, the franchise, Knicks fan TV. CP, I know you haven't been alive for a, a Knicks finals appearance, but here they are in the finals. The the um, Phoenix Suns, not the Knicks, of course. Knicks don't make the finals, but the Phoenix Suns are in the finals. Uh, wishful thinking, man. Oh, there we go. Yes, wishful, wishful thinking. thinking. CP, I'm a big Chris Paul fan, but I would have had to admit if they would have lost this game in a year where everyone's hurt and it's wide open, in a year where clearly the Lakers and the Clippers were better than them, but then AD and Kawhi get hurt and suddenly the Suns have some daylight, right? Because they're an ascending team with a lot of pieces. In a year where campaign, because CP3 has a COVID protocol, the, the team has built a 2-0 lead and he's playing great, and then CP3 comes back and they start to lose. Oh, if he would have lost, they'd have been killed. He'd have been killed. And, and by there was no one with more on the line, more to gain and more to lose than Chris Paul. And he just had a performance for the ages. My hat's off to him. Your analysis of Chris Paul yesterday. Uh, a masterful performance by one of the top five greatest point guards in our era. No doubt about it. Uh, when you talk about 40 points, no turnovers. And then at the end of the game, he revealed the fact that he, he has a wrist injury. He has some torn ligaments in his hand. Yep. He started the game off. He set the tone for his team and his supporting cast led the way. I mean, the Clippers had no answers. They started the game off in his zone. They busted the zone right away with the alley-oop to Macau Bridges. You had supporting cast contributions from Aiton, from Booker, from uh, Jay Crowder, who finally came alive. You know, th- this is the CP3 that, to me, was an MVP caliber player this year. Because everywhere he goes, he wins. Everywhere he goes, he makes his team better. And that was uh, very apparent with his son's team who hadn't made the playoffs in 10 years. Now they're going to the NBA Finals. Now, they were 8-0 in the bubble last year, CP, talking to CP, yeah. the franchise, Knicks fans TV here on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. They were 8-0 in the bubble, and they were an ascending team, and Chris Paul seemed to be a really good fit. It's not like, hey, how are Westbrook and Beal or Harden and Kyrie going to play together? Chris Paul on paper with Devin Booker, you like that right away, and it panned out that way, right? Devin Booker said... Chris Paul's legacy is already secure. He didn't need this. I totally disagree. His, CP, his legacy is secure in the sense that he's a top 10 point guard. But you win a championship right now, I agree with you, top five. If you don't, I'm not sure you are. Had he lost this conference finals, he's on a lot of teams that collapsed. A lot of them, CP. Do you think his legacy is secure or did he need this performance? I think it is secure, Max. I'm with Booker. I think it is secure. Just looking at the winning percentages of the teams that he's played for before he got there and after. Like I said, I, I still think he's a top five player. If he wins a championship, he, he'll solidify that spot. But CP3 is a winner, man. He makes everybody on his teams better. I think a lot of the, the issues that he had with the Clippers was the fact that he didn't have a Devin Booker in the backcourt with him. So in, in those crunch time moments, he had to be the playmaker and he had to be the scorer. You know, you couldn't rely on Blake Griffin to go out there and get you a bucket. Yeah, he had Jamal Crawford, he had J.J. Redick, but now he has an absolute assassin yeah. in Devin Booker who, who can play off of him. And then at the same time, CP3 can take the pressure off of him. I mean, he was clutch. When the Clippers cl- cut that game to seven, eight points, CP3 ripped off 14 of the Suns' last 16 points. It was a masterful performance. Yeah, I mean, really, the Clippers' real problem back then when CP3 was on the team is they needed a wing who was an all-star right. caliber player. Blake Griffin was a, was a superstar almost, or the next thing to it was spectacular. DeAndre Jordan was very good, but they didn't have a real, like, a two-way wing or even a, an offensive wing, Jamal Crawford notwithstanding, a, like an all-star caliber guy. Right. That may have been the difference. Speaking of that kind of player... The guy with the next most on the line, because I think I think Chris Paul had the most to lose and the most to gain. The next guy with kind of the most on the line, I think, was Paul George. And I believe that Paul George has now started to change the narrative about him in the playoffs. Because it doesn't erase all the times he screwed up in the playoffs, and there are many. But you have to now weigh this in balance with the other stuff. On on you know, on the whole, this counterbalances some of the performances, I think, where he was less than his normal self. In these playoffs, at times, he was better than his normal self. What do you think was the difference for him this season? 
this postseason. I, f- I felt like he took it as a challenge. All of the criticism that came his way. You know, when this team blew a 3-1 lead to the Mavs in the bubble, there was a lot of criticism on Paul George. That's where the playoff P uh, nickname came from. He came out and admitted that playing in the bubble affected him mentally. And I thought people kind of piled on him, on him, you know, uh, that wasn't really appropriate. But I thought he took on the challenge. And not to mention the fact that even before this Sun season, he took out the Jazz. Yeah. Once Kawhi Leonard left that series. That's right. Game five, masterful performance in Phoenix, 40 point per Phoenix, 40 point performance with a masterful second half performance. Uh, I thought Paul George has really just understood that he had to be that guy for this Clipper team, and he took him as far as he could go. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you can, I, he gets zero criticism. The only thing is, at times he was less efficient than he normally is, but playoff defenses right. are like that, especially if the leading scorer on the team isn't there and everyone knows you're going to do the bulk of the scoring. I think Paul George did a lot to counteract some of the some of the times he wasn't his normal self. I'm happy for him. Um, Giannis, CP, the franchise. Knicks fan TV here on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. CP... Giannis is the latest in like this entire playoffs. The the Nets were were humiliating the Bucks until Kyrie and Harden go right. Like they're humiliating them. It was a bit of sweep. They would have destroyed the entire world. But injury took them out. LeBron and 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 AD were better than the Suns. They won a game on the road and then a game at home and then AD gets hurt and then the Suns win. Like these these whole playoffs have been decided by injury. But what's interesting to me about the Bucks and the Hawks is both superstars have been hurt. And when they were both hurt, it was the Hawks who had a guy to step up in Lou Will. Can the Bucks win without Giannis? They can win, but the guy that needs to step his game up is Chris Middleton. You know, 16 points in game four, it's not going to cut it with the Greek freak out. Chris Middleton has to step it up and lead this team like the max player that he is, like the all-star that he is. Not only that, you know, the Bucs were a top three-point shooting team in the league this year, shooting about 38% from three. In the playoffs, they're shooting about 30% from three. So Middleton has to lead the charge, but you need their supporting cast, the Bryn Forbes, Drew Holiday. You know, uh, Tucker has to hit his corner threes. Brooke Lopez has to hit his threes. The supporting cast has to step up. But Chris Middleton, make no mistake, he's got to be the guy for them to lead them past the Hawks in this series if the freak does not come back. I think Middleton has been that guy like like of all like to start the series hey Chris Middleton you got to be an all-star more you know he's he's usually good sometimes great Middleton that's why he's sometimes an all-star right I think it's Drew Holiday now who has to step up they got to give the ball to Drew Holiday hey look Giannis isn't here to initiate the offense at all this is your offense now we've seen you play big in the playoffs both ends of the of the floor in the past for other teams take the ball and run the offense and play defense I think I think actually Drew Holiday is is the guy, is the key here. Respond to that, CP, and then I got to pay some bills. Oh, you're absolutely right on that as well. You know, Drew Holiday has to step up, especially on the defensive end. He's got to step up and check Lou Will in that high-octane pick-and-roll offense that the Hawks run. And on the flip side, he's got to get the other guys involved. He's got to get his supporting cast involved and then get buckets himself. The Bucs are going to need to score points because the Hawks have shown that even without Trey Young, they are deep, they are versatile, and they are still fearless. Yeah, that's right. By the way, uh, Kevin Arnovitz pointed out on ESPN.com, Drew Holiday is one of the better pick-and-roll point guards in the NBA. So, okay, let's, you know, all right, Milwaukee, yeah. run it. You got, you know, the, the, you, well, all right, anyway, CP, the franchise, joining me on the Goodyear hotline, uh, brought to you by Goodyear, helping you discover the road ahead, Goodyear, more driven. CP, thank you, as always, for joining me, and uh, maybe Actually, the Knicks yeah. will have some of these good players that we see in the play, <laughs> later on in the playoffs one of these years. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, Thanks. but maybe. Thank you, CP.